would like to call the February 28th, 2017 zoning, Cape Elizabeth Zoning Board of Appeals meeting to order. Uh, the first order of business is to approve the minutes of the January 24th, 2017 uh, meeting. Um, I will entertain a motion. So moved. Uh, any discussion on the uh, minutes? Uh, all in favor of approving the uh, minutes of the January 24th, 2017 meeting? Okay. Likewise. Oh. Uh, one, two, three. Ah, still got four. So that is approved for nothing. Um, we have no old business, so we will move right into the one um, item of new business for tonight's meeting, which is to hear the request of Brian and Marianne Harrington for a variance to add a garage to their house at 5 Bayberry Lane, which is at map U19, lot 58. Um, and Ben, if you could uh, provide us a little bit of an introduction to this case. Sure. As most of you may recall, on October 28th, 2014, Mr. Harrington was here to request a variance uh, to turn a one-car garage into a two-car garage. He, uh, that, that variance was approved to be 17 feet 4 inches from the side property line, the new garage. Uh, Mr. Harrington had a survey of his property that did not show his house on it. He also had a mortgage inspection plan, uh, a mortgage survey, which did show his house on it. He uh, interpolated those two documents together in order to do the addition, and, and a mistake was made. He's, closed, he's, he's now, the garage is built, it's finished, it received a certificate of occupancy, and it's 16.1 feet from the side property line, which has been demonstrated with the standard boundary survey. I advised Mr. Harrington to do a completely new variance application for this, which I think is one way for this board to look at it, just as a new variance. I, I think another way for the board to look at it would be to look at it as an amendment to the prior variance and consider whether or not that variance would have been permitted on October 28, 2014 for 16.1 feet versus 17.33 feet. So I, you, you, you can discuss it and see what you think. Mr. Harrington can make his presentation. But I, th those were the those were the two things that came to mind for me, just looking at it fresh or uh, looking at it as, and looking back at the old approval and seeing if that could have been approved for 16.1 feet, therefore sort of amending his prior variance. Thanks, Ben. Great. Uh, Mr. Harry. All right, thanks for having me tonight. <clears throat> it has been, uh, mentioned when I first was looking at the uh, expansion to the garage. Um, we only added uh, 10 feet to it, but it did go over that line. You could see that the property line is at an angle on that side of the house. And so I used the, the two documents that he mentioned, um, the original town document from 1967, I believe, um, which gets down to two decimal places, and then my mortgage survey that I got when I bought the house, um, which is rounded off. So what I did is I uh, used software downloaded to scale um, these documents, and scaling the mortgage survey matched the town survey. Uh, checked the size of the house that was shown on the mortgage survey, and that lined up too. Um, the one assumption that I made was the position of the house on that survey uh, to the line was an exact measurement. And I carried my request also to two decimal places. So there were kind of two pieces that uh, in hindsight, I would go back and say, okay, can I be sure that this mortgage survey has the house exactly positioned, which there are not dimensions there. And, um, you know, should I really be asking for 
a variance with a two decimal place uh, um, measurement. So again, I went with 17.33, what I got from the software. Um, the actual turned out to be 16.1. So I, I put together the, the document um, that has the uh, little corner of the garage shown. It's, um, it's about, again, a foot in and about two square feet of that corner of the garage that is actually over the, the current line. So what I'd like to do is uh, go back and amend or treat it as a new uh, request to match that exact measurement of 16.1 feet on that corner of the garage. Uh, any questions for Mr. Harrington? Hi. <clears throat> um, just a, a detail, Ben. I, I know you you mentioned a couple times that the variance was granted on October 24th, 2014. The original variance. October 28th, 28th sorry. 2014. Um, but I, I note the survey by NADU Land Surveys, uh, note 16, references it on January 2nd, 2015. Is that, not that, it, not that it matters too much, but just want to understand. What, uh, are they, in fact, referencing the same, I, I same variance? I think probably the date it was recorded. Okay. The registry is my guess. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah just a just a detail, not a. Or maybe signs for the get on January. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, it's definitely. Yeah, it, it was October 20, 2014. The. Uh, yeah, the variance. Yeah, the variance certificate. It it was. It formally was put into the deed on January 8th, 2015. I, I have the certificate of variance okay. that, that has a registry. So, so, yeah, that's fine. I just want to yeah. sort of confirm that the, that the uh, note on the survey is, in fact, talking about that same variance that was approved uh, in, in, 20, in October 2014. That's fine. Thank you. Questions for Mr. Harrington? I am symp sympathetic to your plight. Thank There's you. going to be a discussion shortly that we're going to be talking about things that will make it difficult um, as to this particular request. Um, was the garage built by you or did you hire a subcontractor? Hired a subcontractor. And the, did the subcontractor rely on the paperwork that you provided for the purposes of constructing the garage? Yes. Okay. Any further questions? Thank you. Great. Thank you. Um, we'll open up to public comment, but there's nobody else in the room, so um, I will close public comment. Uh, what a note went out uh, regarding this variance application? Then? Yes, and I. I fielded three inquiries, none of which objected to the application. Okay. So you did not receive any 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 objections to the application or the notification? Correct. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'll now open it up to board discussion. So Ben, um, looking at the, the current survey, so lot 44 on the right well, to, its, to its east, um, right now we've it's basically one foot three inches closer than we everyone thought it was. Does that propose, uh, have any issue with spacing between houses? No, it does. Okay, because there's a, it looks like there's a twenty foot drainage easement there. So, the, yeah, the drainage easement is only on lot forty four. Okay, so if we looked at this 
a couple of years ago and looked and said, well, it's actually far enough away from the net house next door, so that's fine. It doesn't change much. Yes, and I did speak the speak with the owner of Lot 44 today. Okay. He came in to look at the application and we, did, we discussed it for okay. a few minutes. And he, he asked if he needed to rewrite his letter stating that he was okay with it. And I told him he didn't need to. Okay. <clears throat> so Ben, you mentioned we could look at this one of two ways, either a, a new, uh, an application for a new variance or an, perhaps an amendment to the previous one. I, looking down through the, the standards for for variances, that I think we're going to have a hard time. At least I'm going to have a hard time with uh, with the third condition. If you're looking at section 1952B1C, which says the practical difficulty is not the result of action taken by the applicant or prior owner. I mean, to me, clearly, the, we granted a variance and the the current owner built a garage uh, closer to the property line than, than allowed for it under the variance. That said, uh, there's no doubt in my mind that if the applicant uh, back in 2014 requested a variance for 16.1 feet, uh, a setback of 16.1 feet instead of 17.33 feet, I would be comfortable granting that. So. Personally, I, th I think I would rather look at this as a, an amendment to the, to the previous variance because I, I think I'm going to have a hard time with, with that, the condition C uh, that I mentioned before if we're looking at this fresh. But if we were looking at it fresh, as you said, if we're looking at it with that, that quote unquote new measurement, if you, we were okay with that, then it would meet those requirements. Because it was only one car garage, so the the his condition wasn't as, wasn't subject to that in, in the 2014 either. Yeah, I guess my point is, it, <clears throat> you know, we're talking about a foot here, and maybe a little more than a foot. And I, I would have been just as comfortable granting a variance for what's on the ground today as I would have for what we did grant that variance. Um, so, I, you know, I, that's why I feel everything else that we, we talked about back in 2014 still holds in, in my mind anyways. Um, so just amending the, the setback from 17.33 to 16.1 is, seems like a logical way to approach it for me anyways. Um. This is a troubling application. Um, I don't like variances, and this is a good example why they should, we should be very cautious, as well as the applicant. I'm troubled here because what is the thing to be amended? Because the variance, once registered, runs with the land. So it's not something that we, I'm troubling with the, the thing that allows us to act. And so um, that's, that's a troubling point. The second is that um, there's a prior example. There's a family that lived just behind the school where they put the, an extension on the front of their house. It was too close to the road. And so they were faced with two options. Cut off the portion of the house that ran into the setback or pay a fine to the town to allow that not to be, I can't recall the phrase now, but not to be a violation a of the setback. consent agreement. The issue there was, that I believe, that they were not eligible for a variance. I agree with you, yeah. Um, we denied it because they, they built closer than the setback allowed, which is sort of just what's happened here. And they, and they were seeking an after the fact variance, if, if I remember correctly. Now, you know, obviously the town will have to, if it comes before the town, they'll have to consider this as an issue once we resolve this application here, but help me find another option to grant the application 
if it's, or the relief that's being sought if it's not a variance. So I'm, I'm, I too am stuck with that 1952B1C. Uh, that, that's pretty direct language here. Uh, it's unfortunate because whether it's an inch or a foot or it's it's terrible result, terrible. If the if the if the ex, the garage extension hadn't been built yet, we would grant the variance because we granted almost an exact same variance two years ago for one uh, just one foot shorter. I, I don't disagree with you because it, the thing, the harm has not created, the harm to the setback has not occurred yet. Because it had not. It has not been built, that's right. But so you're saying since it's now been built, I, I guess, Explain to me why, I mean, the fact that it's been built causes a problem with respect to, you know, who the difficulty was created the, by because we have an answer to that question now. Right. I also read it that there is no practical difficulty if there's no garage there. And that the practical, what we have previously considered a practical difficulty is, hence a garage being built past the, the setback. I don't think we've actually come across an example where a homeowner has created its own practical difficulty. I'm sorry, that's not true because there was a family that sought to put a garage, a, a kitchen in the front of their house. And we said no because you have space in the back of the house. So you can't have a, a variance to put the garage kitchen in the front of the house because you are creating your own practical difficulty. You can put it in the back of the house where there's plenty of space. But they didn't want the kitchen in the back of the house. They wanted it along the front of the house. Um, let's jump back to the first issue that you raised. Yeah. Is there anything that grants us the power to amend slash revise our previous grant of the variance? Ben? I don't know. I mean, my personal preference would be if, if you know, assuming we're going to approve this, if, if we were to do that, we actually go right through it as opposed to doing an amendment having an approval because I'm not so sure that I, I, yeah I don't I don't know I, I don't know for I, I, I'm unaware of any anywhere in the ordinance that empowers us to amend a variance um, and I think there seems to be general agreement on that yeah, and my take on this is from a policy perspective I think we've got issues both with practical difficulty and with no other feasible alternative. You don't necessarily need to have a, a garage um, to have a, a saleable, occupiable house lot. So from a policy perspective, I'm not a huge fan. Practically speaking, the zoning board in 2014 approved this. Uh, and we're now talking about a matter of inches, 12 inches in the or 13 or whatever, whatever it is. Uh, so my inclination would be to approve this uh, and move forward. And again, uh, from a policy perspective, I think we, we look at these a little bit more closely now. Um, but I think it would be fundamentally unfair for us after having, after the board did approve this just a couple of years ago, to now pull the rug out from under the applicant, so to speak, on a, on a I, I mean, I, I agree. Um, so, how do we get around three? I, I, I guess the question is, should we be looking at this from, as if the garage has not been built yet? Yeah, we're kind of looking at de novo almost, where we're like looking at the facts on the ground as of, we would, are we saying we would still approve the garage to be built now? Even though it's a foot closer. 
Yeah. What, what if Mr. Harrington came in? He was he, he started building this about six months after his variance was approved. What if he realized right before the foundation was poured that of uh, this error? And then, and then he was coming back. And, you know, we've got concrete trucks in the driveway, and we realized we have this error. I, mean, it, it, I, I thought of all sorts of different scenarios. That, that would be one of them, you know, prior to any concrete being poured. We, then does the action of pouring the concrete then trip you up on number three? Or, I mean, it, it seems like, it seems like if you could amend it, or not necessarily amend it, but re, re approve it, uh, with concrete trucks sitting in the driveway, that you could similarly approve it right after the concrete is poured. So I, I see where you're coming from. I mean, you're, yeah. it's already been determined that the practical difficulty exists and that the difficulty, the, you know, the need to have a two-car garage wasn't the fault of the homeowner. So, I don't know. And also, a part of the practical difficulty is a result of the town Approving, you know, the town took an action to allow this to be done. So, in a way, in the, in the town's direction, he commenced building. So, those similar arguments were raised with the family that had built an extension too close to the road, and there was in the issue there was a telephone pole, and they actually, you know, the grass got a little closer. And the former code enforcement officer went out several times, multiple times, looking at it. And that we, we, there was an issue of estoppel, whether the town could be partially at fault. But in, that, in that case, had a variance already been granted? Um, no. 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 So, that, so, that, that, so that's different. In other words, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't a situation where the, a variance had been granted for <clears throat> 12 feet or, you know, no, no, no variance had been approved. The town hadn't found that there was any practical difficulty whatsoever. There was no reason that a variance would have been approved in the first place. And we, in, in this case, it's different because we have approved a variance for essentially what has happened, except for one foot. So, I, I just... I'll be the devil's advocate here. All right. Oh, are you, is the... I have two propositions. The first, what was submitted back in 2014? Was the board aware of an error? No. In any of the paperwork, right? No, so the board granted an variance for whatever, all right? It's the obligation of the homeowner to build within the variance, all right? Now, there could be some argument that you rely on other people and then there's insurance and you know you can always shift the blame, but the argument is that it's, you have to build within the variance. Here is the other alternative where most 90 some odd percent was built within the variance, but a, poor, a corner is not. All right, so what is the, what's the difference between that and you're gonna go build a new home on a lot, no variance involved, and you put the same cut type of structure, just that corner of the house just goes over the, the setback. Isn't that the same result here? Well, I mean, the difference is when you're talking about a variance, you're establishing certain circumstances which permit you to encroach upon a setback. Whereas if you're just building on a brand, if you're building on a un, unbuilt lot, a vacant lot, then you, before you've built, you have not established any, any grounds for going over a setback. Here, it had already been established that the board had approved a variance to go over the setback. I see it as the variance allows you to build within that, whether it's past the setback or not. You have to build within the variance. Building a house without a variance, you, you still have to build within the building envelope and not go in a setback. All right? Now, I'm quite content in, in allowing, if this came Greenfield site, the house is then, we needed to build a garage. Not, I don't think it's really an issue. This, should, this is garden variety. Right. 
this is the worst case scenario for Girving invariants. And because now we have to think about how to approve something that has already been built but in violation of the variance. And I see the variance as running with the land. So it's not something that we can amend. It's not, it, 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 we're even struck uh, prohibited from the, by creating a new variance based on the one version, one interpretation of the, of the uh, zoning code here. So I, I'm, as I said, I was really sympathetic. This is a terrible result. But I'm, I'm in the same category as the family that lived past the school where they put a house, uh, an extension, too close to the road, and they were not eligible for a variance. Because once we gave the variance in 2014, the building envelope of the, of the, of the law changed to include the variance. That's how, that's how I see it. So, um, help me get to the other side of this one so we can move along on this particular application. Um, I'm, I'm struggling. I'm struggling. One point I'd make about the, the request near the school that you referred to is it, it, that was, uh, it was a different situation. It was much more egregious. It violated the setback by four feet, uh, wasn't based on any survey or information. It didn't even, I mean, if you measured to the utility pole, it didn't even meet what they said based on the measurement to the utility pole. Uh, and, and, and again, that situation and uh, the situation where someone's just building a new house with a building envelope, I, I think the difference of the situation is that uh, in one situation, the, the person has demonstrated a practical difficulty and one that doesn't. That said, I still agree with what you're saying, but I think there's a counter argument that it, you, you, one person has practical difficult, one person has demonstrated practical difficulty, the other person has not. The other issue that was raised in our previous application was the de minimis standard. Do you recall that, how that came about? Doesn't wear a bell? So over like Dearborn and like East Brentwood East, the, the garage being expanded. And you know, isn't that can that argument also be applied here? You know, if we did raise that as a policy issue for the board, then how do you, you know, this is effectively a new variance that would need to be registered. I think I am comfortable um, based upon what, what Ben has had to say, deciding this on relatively narrow grounds in concluding that the practical difficulty is, is, is not the result of the action taken by the applicant because this was a mismeasurement, not necessarily by the applicant. Um, there is no other feasible alternative other than removing the garage or somehow structurally altering, modifying the garage. Uh, so if we base this just alone on the fact that this is a mistake as a result of an initial variance, then I think we arguably clear the hurdles of those two criteria. Because the variance that was granted was not the right variance? What? It's not the... I, 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 guess, I guess what, I, what I'm saying is I, I'm, I'm considering this anew as these are not the facts and circumstances that were presented to us in 2014. The change results to results from something that has, has occurred in the meantime, which is some kind of mismeasurement or misunderstanding of the dimensions. So the facts on the ground are we have a garage that's been built. There was a mismeasurement that is not necessarily a result of the action taken by the applicant. The, and at this stage, there's no other feasible alternative really than to, 
than to grant the variance. Ben, ben let me ask you a question. Um, if you had approached this in a different way, and you'd simply gone to the applicant's property and you'd found that, in fact, this was in violation of the initial variance that was granted. What are the applicant's right, rights at that point? His rights at that point are either to accept your determination or to come here and ask for a variance. Isn't that right? Yes. And that's what the applicant's done. So aren't we in that position at this point? There has been no determination by the code enforcement officer that there is a violation of the code. Well, that's true. And so perhaps that, if we're thinking about that alternative, that we table the application and perhaps time will go by and that there will be reconsideration on that matter. Say that again. Table the application or we'll withdraw it. Code enforcement officer would be entitled to go out and look at the property and issue if the measurements are right and violation of the variance or the setback and come back and issue a letter of violation, whatever the term is. Allow the homeowner the period of time to respond. There would be a final determination that would be appealable to or come back to the, the board to assess that determination by the code enforcement officer. Well, yeah. but, but it, that creates a, a number of problems for the applicant as well as just administrative expense and that we could probably shortcut here. Well, but... Well, and if the applicant, I mean, for example, wants to, to sell to, his property, in the meantime, he doesn't have a... But to play that out, okay, then yeah. goes out and it is in violation. I mean, then, then, no, well, well, then no, no, they and can't I, overlook the foot that it's... No, because part of the, the power that the board has is when it's engaged, and it is engaged when there's administrative process by the code enforcement officer. So that, tech, yes, we, by admission, and also the application itself, has said that there's a, a, a violation. Has there been a determination? No, arguably, because the code enforcement officer has not issued a letter making that determination. So but, but, I, but at the so, end of the day, the homeowner should get the full garage and move on with his life, all right? But, but will that, as a practical matter, how does he get there? But will that allow, will that, allow that to happen? Well, I mean, I, I guess what I'm wondering is if, if, a, if a notice of violation is issued, right? I mean, I don't, I, we haven't dealt with many of those, so I don't have kind of many in my mind of, you know, an appeal of a notice of violation. But is there some language in the ordinance which gives us some wiggle room after a, after a notice of violation is granted, some type of equitable powers that we have to say, yes, but? Well, I'm thinking that there's, even if we went down that, that, our, that process, we then get to the decision where either variance or no variance, or variance is not an option. And that gets back to the, the, the family past the school where they had an extension too close to the road. And we, in that case, they, would, they could not get a variance. So I'm stuck with that. If we go down this road of issuing a letter from the code enforcement officer, will we not be back to where we are in the discussion? That how do you allow the variance to, to occur a second time that corrects the problem with the garage? So, I'm intrigued with the, the, the thinking that, that that could be an, uh, an issue, but I'm still back to the um, building a structure that exceeds the, the confines of the variance. I, I could certainly examine the property and the evidence and make a determination that the garage is in violation and I could order a remedy of that, one of which would be come here to the zoning board for relief, one, one avenue to remedy my violation. I, I'm not sure if that gets us 
for right. I mean, the question is, do, do we, I mean, I think it just gets us back to do, the same Do we have any, I mean, that, and, and then we're one step further down the road, which is a violation, I, I mean, which could end up happening anyways, but, yeah. um, I, you know, again, we haven't dealt with that. I just don't recall, I don't recall an appeal of, an, of a notice of violation, so I don't know what, off the top of my head, our powers are in yeah. terms of, you know, it seems to me that that, that would put the, uh, assuming Ben would <laughs> find the survey correct, that would put the applicant in the position of challenging Ben's findings, which support the facts that the applicant himself has provided. So I'm not sure how we could then sort of overturn that or, I, 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 I think that's a, I, I did, I don't think that's a, a a realistic way to approach this. I don't see any advantage to that either. I mean, I think we make a call on it tonight, one way or the other. Otherwise, yeah. it's just. It's so after it's Josh, after happens. hearing after hearing what you've said and after what Mike has said, um, you know, my thinking is it's shifting a little. If we can look at this. Uh, in its pre-existing condition. If we look at it, you know, the difference, um, the, the difference between this, I think, and, and the, the one over by the school that you keep referencing um, is, I think this one, we, we've shown a practical difficulty and uh, we've looked at it before and I think we can you know, I, I think we may be able to, to look at it again as uh, before. As before. And I think that's the so probably the simplest way. To there's there's a certain aspect here of, of what we call refer to as res judicata, right? Yeah. It's an issue that's really already been decided but for the additional foot that we're talking about. Yeah. I don't necessarily agree with with what you said, Mike, where someone has built over the property line or, or over the setback line um, and the, there's a practical difficulty and it was caused by a mismeasurement because then anyone who, anyone who, who sort of encroaches or, or goes over the setback line could say, well, it was a mismeasurement, <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Whereas, uh, clearly this was a mismeasurement, but it was a mismeasurement when we were uh, reviewing a, a previous variance application. Uh, not necessarily a, a mismeasurement during construction, you know what I mean? Sure. So that, that's, that's how my thinking has changed since the beginning of the meeting. Certainly, if, if we were able to amend the variance, which it, it sounds like you guys don't believe we can, and I, you guys are, are more uh, qualified to, to make that call than, than I, but uh, it, it's, that, that would be an easier, easier way to approach it, I think. But uh, if we can't, I think perhaps we can look at it, look at it new, but in the, the pre, the pre-developed condition. I mean, that seems to be the only way to approve this. So my only concern is setting precedent. Yeah. I mean, that, that's, that, that, that's the, I just, that's just my concern. I, and I, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying I'm not inclined to grant it, I'm just, there's a slippery slope. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and where and, and just what happens when a year from now the same thing happens, but it's four feet, uh, you know? And I guess it, it, if it were four feet, then the decision might be well standing in the shoes of the board when it was originally granted. 
if it had been for you know another four feet, maybe we wouldn't have approved it. I mean, I, I think there seems to probably be consensus that if this application were before us before, we would have approved it because one foot is one foot, and it it, act, it does not change the application, the variance application in any other way. But you know, is there any issue? Are we setting any bad precedent? Um, because, you know, what we're kind of saying is we granted a variance, but you don't really have to totally adhere to the variance that we granted. Right. And, uh, you know, how did, how did we get here? Uh, it, this is sort of a sidebar, but we see a lot of applications without surveys. And it, I'm always uncomfortable when we when we're looking at variances and especially variances down to the hundredth of a foot um, based on not an on the ground survey um, and you know do we do we sort of require that going forward I, you know I don't know to make ourselves comfortable and avoid this situation because I agree with you I think it it it's troubling, it's, you do worry about setting precedent, and that's why I made the comment uh, earlier where um, I, I think it, it is important in this case that we've previously granted a variance here. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Because I mean, someone I, else who comes along and says, and, and you know, we haven't, we haven't looked at their case at all, we've they've proven no practical difficulty, and they say, well, yeah, I'm over the setback, but yeah, I mismeasured then. Oh, no, I, I, that's I, a situation I, where. We, well, and I think that to me, that's a difference between this and, yeah. and the, the other case that we've been right. talking about. There had never been a variance granted in that. So there had never been any, the, the board had never, ever approved encroaching on a setback that was then encroached upon. I mean, there, so you, we couldn't go, there would be no possible way for us to go back and sit in the shoes of the board when the board granted the variance in that case because the board never had right. previously. Sure. Sure. Here we have. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that's how I distinguish this case from the other case. Yeah. Agreed. And just to respond briefly to that, we do require surveys all the time now since the ordinance changed to require surveys. Uh, and Mr. Harrington did have a survey, although it didn't have the house on it. <laughs> uh, so, you know, it's an odd situation. I, I completely agree with what you're saying. I mean, to be 100% diligent, there should be an up-to-date survey showing the house and the property line. Mr. Harrington had one survey that showed the property, and he had a, uh, and then he had a mortgage survey that showed the house on it. Uh, from a precedent perspective, uh, you know, I think this could be looked at as almost like a de minimis paperwork error where we essentially have about 1% of this garage uh, in not compliant based on what could be viewed as a paperwork error. I, I understand it's a tough one, but from a, for, from a precedent perspective, I think the word de minimis could be used. I guess if, if we were to move forward with a motion to approve, kind of based on putting ourselves in the shoes of the board when this was originally approved, do we have the votes? I mean, I don't think we have one. Um, but, you know, are, are, how many of us are inclined to approve this? Basically, it would basically be by viewing it as we viewed it back in 2014. I'm comfortable doing so. I'm not a huge fan, but, but yeah. It makes the most sense. Yeah, I would do. I'm not quite sure what, what, you're, what you're saying, Josh, in a sense. I, I guess what I'm just saying is. Are, 
Are you saying it, it you, would not be in, in, then a de novo review? No, this is, I mean, I mean, the, the board's discussion is on the record, so, I mean, I, I, the findings of fact, and the, it, it would basically be as this has been proposed, but approving it. Um, I, guess, I guess one question would be maybe to work through is would we be, would there be any other findings of fact that we would want to include? Um, I mean, this, this does include the fact that the new garage has been built. Um, I, I too am, am inclined to approve this along these lines. Um, so I think we may have the votes to do that. But is there any other findings of fact that we would need or want? Um, and, and again, I am thinking about setting bad precedent or making sure we do not set bad precedent here. Um, and I think to, to Ben's point, since now surveys are required, I think the chance of this, that this could be kind of a one-off type of thing. This, we may not be, there may not really be a slippery slope problem because of the new requirements for a survey. Um, so I guess for the, the board members who are kind of inclined to approve the variance request, would you, do you think there's any other findings of fact that we would, we would want? It already references the, the previously approved variants. Um, I think I'm comfortable with, with leaving the findings as they are. I'm, I'm not necessarily married to that. If somebody had some additional finding they wanted to propose, it, it's worth talking about. But given the fact that the previous variance is already referenced, I think I'm comfortable with the findings. Right. And I mean, obviously, the fact that the previous variance is referenced yeah. and to to have received the previous variance, previous variance, all the factors that one must meet to be granted a variance have been met right. for all but a foot or so of the variance that is now being requested. And, and I guess in, in the interest of moving it along, I would, I would formally move to approve the request for Brian and Mary Ann Harrington uh, for a variance to add uh, the old minutes here. We need to approve the request of Brian Marion Harrington uh, for the request of variance. to add a garage to their house at 5 Bayberry Lane, Matthew 19, Law 58. Um, and if you think a friendly amendment to that. Uh, well, I'm just, very, please feel it just to add a garage? I guess to ratify, to approve the garage that's already been constructed. Here the request for a variance to add a garage. I mean, to ratify. Approve the variance as requested within the Harrington application. But still the variance is to add a garage. <laughs> and variance is to add a garage. That's existing. As long as it's consistent with the application, I think we're good. There are no new, no new garages. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the, the motion is to hear the request of Brian and Mary. The, the motion is to approve the request of Brian and Marion Harrington for a variance to add a garage to their house at 5 Bayberry Lane, Mappy 19, Lot 58. 
right as as consistent with their as as requested within their application okay uh do you have a second second okay any board discussion on that motion i'll just make a point so we can move along on this how do you, on the additional findings of fact when you talked about the motion are you including those additional findings yes we will be okay how do you get, how do you address number five? I'm sorry, number four. I take that back. Number three. Which which? The practical three? difficulty point. How how do you qualify that or or or? I, I mean, I think by. I, I mean, I think based on our discussion, by basically reverting back to the. The application that was that was approved in 2014. So you're suggesting that the, the practical the practical difficulty, comma, as existing in 2014. Yes. So that's the you're suggesting the putting the, that phrase in there. Oh. Or you're just reading it, understanding that phrase, meaning that the practical difficulty. Difficulties not today, but going back in time to 2014. Um, right, we don't need to answer my question. Uh, on the motion, um, it has been um, uh, uh, raised for discussion, is it not? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I don't need to have any further discussion on it uh, unless she does want to have discussion on it. I don't need any further discussion. Okay. Um, all in favor? So I have four in favor. All opposed? Wait. I'm going to abstain simply because I'm, I'm, I'm still not quite sure uh, what all we're doing in a sense, of whether we have the new variants and we are uh, presuming all of the uh, factors that were taken into consideration in the last variants also apply. Here. Yes, I mean, we, we if are. If that's the case, then I will vote in favor of this new variant. I, I, I mean, the way, I'm, the way I'm viewing the motion and the way I think the findings of fact, which we will now be including, which includes the fact that the zoning board approved a variance for all but one foot that is now requested, that that is all incorporated. So, so yes. Then I will vote with you. Okay. All right. Oh, one abstention. Ab abstain. Okay. Abstain. Yes. Okay. Um, so it is. It is approved five two. Here you abstain. You do not oppose. Uh, no, I will stick with my um, abstaining. There's no what. Okay. Uh, All right. I'm Just not going to vote. That's gotcha. right. All right. I'm not going to get into the fray. Okay. Five. It it approves. By five. Um, findings of fact. Uh, variance re number one, uh, variance request for map U19, lot 58, 5 Bayberry Lane, applicants Brian and Marion Harrington. Number two, Brian and Marion Harrington are the owners of record of the subject property. Number three, 5, Bay five Bayberry Lane is a non conforming lot in the RA district. The required setbacks are 25 feet from the front property line, 25 feet from the side, and 20 feet from the rear property line. Four, on October 28, 2014, the Zoning Board approved a variance for a two-car garage to be constructed 17.33 feet from the side property line. Five, a new boundary survey shows the new garage addition to be 16.1 feet from the side property line. Additional findings of fact. One, the need for a variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not to the general conditions of the neighborhood. Two, the granting of a variance will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood and will not unreasonably detrimentally affect the use or market value of abutting properties. Three, the practical difficulty is not the result of action taken by the applicant or a prior owner. Four, no other feasible alternative to a variance is available to the petitioner. Five, the granting of a variance will not unreasonably adversely affect the natural environment. 
And six, the property is not located in whole or in part within shoreland areas as described in Title 38, Section 435. And the conclusion, there is no substantial departure from the intent of the ordinance, and a literal enforcement of the ordinance would cause a practical difficulty as defined by 30 AMRSA Section 4353, 4C. Um, all in all in favor of those findings and the conclusion. Five in favor. Um, yeah. uh, moving on to communications. Anything, Ben? No communications. And uh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.